Hello everyone, welcome to another session of Real Talk with Pastor K. And I have the singular privilege of asking him all the serious, deep, spiritual questions today. My name is Amez El Sagwa Idu, and of course we all know Pastor K, my man of God, and my brother, praise yeah. God. Pastor K, it's so good to be the one asking you all these questions. Yeah. And this is very important to me, because boy meets girl, they're in love. Yeah. Why do we need counseling? Everything is nice. <laughs> They're butterflies. When we see each other, our hearts are yeah. boom, 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 boom. Yeah. So it's going to work. So why exactly do we have to have, get counseling? Why? That's a, that's a very good question, actually. And um, it's, it's actually one of the very common, it's actually one of the very common um, relationship myths, okay. uh, which is that we love each other. Yes. You know, that's all that counts. Okay. You know, um, that's never the case. Because um, thank God you are a lawyer. And you've been a lawyer for many years. Um, the whole law profession <laughs> <laughs> is built on people not being able to settle their differences out of court. Yeah. You know, it's built on that. The whole law. So um, it, it, it's 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 not enough to just say I love you, you love me. Um, there are a whole lot of other dynamics that go on in a relationship, and a good counselor um, can bring you clarity, can bring peace, can bring help when uh, both of you can help yourselves. Now, it, and it's not like, it's not as if counseling um, is a surefire way of solving everything. It's not as if counselors are magicians. In fact, um, every good counselor, we actually hope that you don't need counseling. Mm. Uh, but the reality is that there will always come times when most families, most couples will do well, mm. you know, by having a counselor. Not many people will be able to settle their differences out of court or be able to settle their issues just by, you know, talking at home. There are some cases that are in court that are families. It's families that are in court. Mm. So these people have grown up together, known each other all their lives, but they couldn't arrive at a reasonable or amicable conclusion without third parties or without trained experts being there to, you know, help them negotiate, help them, you know, provide guidance, help them interpret, you know, what the rights and privileges are things like that. So we, we actually do hope that people can settle their differences without counseling, but the honest truth is that uh, most people will not be able to do that. And also counseling is not just for when you have crisis. Mm. Sometimes things can be going well and you still need counseling just to um, give clarity, give peace. It's like servicing your car. You, you, there are times you go to the mechanic, the workshop because your car is bad, but there are times you also go to the workshop to make sure your car doesn't get bad. Right. Okay. So I have, I mean, two questions come to my mind. You said good counselor. How do you know a good counselor? Because your pastor, like Pastor K, he's a religious guy, and he, fortunately he's my pastor. Yeah. So it's, I take it for granted that he's a good counselor, but not everybody's pastor is Pastor K. Oh, yeah. you know, so how do you know a good counselor? Okay. And then next question is, because he's my pastor, yeah. does he mean he can counsel me when it comes very to good. relationships? Very, very good question. And um, I'm a pastor, so some pastors will be upset um, by the things I'm going to say, but the honest truth is that in all these years of being a counselor, some of the worst or most terrible advice people have received has come from pastors. Mm -hmm. um, because they were not humble enough to say, hey, this is not my area um, of skill or gifting. You know, they just wanted to, you know, try to say, most, most cases require some, and this is the same for any, almost any other field, you know, I, I wish uh, sometimes pastors could try and stay within the area of their expertise or the area of their calling, mm, yeah. you know, um, because marriage, marriage can be complicated. So mm. um, a lot of the most horrible advice I've had came from pastors. Mm. And sometimes pastors just say, oh, you offended this, you offended this, just tell each other sorry and go home, you know. <laughs> forgive. <laughs> yeah, just forgive yourself. Mm. I've had all kinds of, yes. all kinds of advice. I've had all, just hug yourself. You know, <laughs> hug each other and just but go it's home. it's deeper than that. It's usually deeper than yes. that. It's, and a trained counselor knows, is, he understands how to diagnose. You know, because most problems are not on the surface. Pause. <laughs> so we, we are trained as spiritual people that we're so, our pastors are. So how do you know how to say? Because now it's not about the pastor now. I'm talking yes. about me. Yes. I want to be counseled. Yeah. So how do I know that my pastor cannot counsel me and deal with that? That, that is a tough situation uh, because um, I'm a pastor. I, I like my people to believe in me, to believe, um, you know, I, I can help them. But the truth is that I can't help in every case. Even as a counselor, um, we're going to start our 
counseling training, courses are available now. One of the things we train our counselors to realize is that you have to specialize. Hmm. You can't handle every case. There are cases I've, I've booked and entered into and found out, no, this is not my area. Hmm. We are going to make a mess of each other. So I had to tell the people, I had to refund wow. money, yes, and send them to somebody that could help them because there was no use That's wasting our time. You're collecting money. Oh. <laughs> no, but it's not Jesus that taught you good. all the things that, that you are <laughs> dishing That's out. That's a good question. Uh -huh. uh, most people that would cancel for free or for cheap are not trained. That's how you know. Um, they are not trained. Um, it takes thousands of dollars to be trained. And um, generally, people pay attention when they pay. Yes. But yes. When you just... If it's that expensive. Yes. It doesn't even have to be expensive, but... Um, when people, when it's, in fact, my dream, and this is part of why we're even doing the counseling courses, my dream is that we would raise so much counselors that people would take it as a profession, mm -hmm. you know, um, and they can focus and concentrate on it and be good at it. When we don't pay, what that means is that people are going to do this part time. Mm -hmm. And you're a lawyer. How many high profile lawyers have a part time thing they're doing? High profile that you will consult when you have a real serious issue that tells you, oh, I can't come to court today because I'm, I'm going to sell uh, um, cars. Mm -hmm. No. When you are going to be big, when you are going to be specialized, imagine your doctor. You, somebody has brain surgery. I say, where well, is the doctor? Say, he's coming home. He has a, one other meeting. He's selling bread. He's, he's, he has a bakery. Ah. He, wants to, he wants to check the, uh, if they've, they've delivered flour. And that's the guy that wants to have a brain surgery. He, nobody. When, when, once the, you know, it gets to serious issues, we like specialists. And if they're not paying, it means that person will have to do something else to sustain his family, sustain his, himself while he's... And he's not going to give you that attention. But the person that's going to... Because real counseling is different from pastoring. And I'm a pastor, like I said, I'm a counselor, so I understand both the difference. As a pastor, if you have an issue, I can pray for you. I can quickly show you scriptures. All that shouldn't take more than 30 minutes, really. Even prayer shouldn't take more than five minutes. What am I praying? God is not deaf. We can do this. That, but counseling... Hmm. <laughs> there are times five hours... In one day, uh, we're not even done. We're not even started. We're just at the foundation. So, you know, that, that can't be shared with other things if you're going to do it well. So most people that will do free or very cheap for you, they're usually not trained. They're not experts. They're not specialists. And maybe, yes, they can solve problems at, you know, at a, at a level. But if somebody's going to do this with all their time, uh, they need to be compensated. If somebody's going to be trained, by the time he spends thousands of dollars to be trained, he has to also charge. Now, um, some churches can sponsor, you know, counselors and provide the service for the members free, but somebody has still paid. That's the point. Okay. You know, so it's not payment. really free. No. Um, real counseling will not be free. Like I said, some organizations like churches and co can provide it free because somehow, you know, income has still come in to cover it. It's mm -hmm. not free, just free to the member, which is part of the benefits of being a member. In fact, there are people I refer to, their pastors. When I see the case, I know that this case will require attention. It requires somebody spending time with this person, giving good support. And I know I can't afford that. And, and I don't know anybody that can. So I say, look, go to your church. Mm -hmm. Your church has a structure. In our, for instance, in our own church, we don't charge if you're a member of the church. Yeah. So that's fine. But if you want services outside of that, oh, you have to pay for it. Yeah. Okay, Pasuki, you're a pastor and you're a counselor. Doesn't that interfere with your, like your being spiritual? God hates divorce, classic yes. example. Yes. How do you, have you ever felt like this marriage should not continue? Oh, sadly, there are marriages I've myself closed. <laughs> <laughs> there are marriages I've told them, you guys just go home, it's over. Wow. Yes. Uh, and you sadly. could do that. Yes. So didn't you feel like that was in violation of what you are preaching <laughs> to your yes. members? Um, not at all, not at all. Uh, oh, wow. In fact, okay. uh, me being a pastor gives me an edge because I have God's perspective. So when I do certifications and trainings, uh, beyond what I'm taught, I merge it with my understanding of God. So that gives me an edge even over my trainer, even over the regular person, because I am combining both. I have a good grasp of how both works. Um, God hates divorce. It doesn't mean you can never divorce. All right, God hates divorce. We, and even as counselors, we really don't push or even suggest for people to separate. However, there are some cases where the abuse is getting out of hand, either emotional or verbal or... Uh, physical, the abuse, and people are being destroyed. Either the kids, the spouse, you see that this woman is becoming depressed or this man is losing his mind and is getting out of hand and the, the offending party is not willing to, you know, change or do the work. And so there are times we do what is called, um, we start from usually from a separation. So it's either a, there's a controlled separation and there's a normal separation. So in a controlled separation, you are separate, but this doesn't give you the liberty mm. 
So they are, you are separated under certain confines. So you're not just, oh, I'm separated now, you start dating other people. Mm -hmm. or I'm separated, you start living. No, no, it's controlled separation. So there's separation, but we are, you are controlled and we are working with you even while you are separated. But there's a general separation where both of you go and breathe. So that's not controlled, all right? And there's the third stage, which is now where both parties have come to the realization that this thing cannot work. Now, they have to make that decision themselves, but we can guide, we can, they have to make that decision themselves, but we can guide them, you know, through the process of the divorce itself. It sounds very time consuming. And if I'm a member of your church, it's free. Yes. Um, if you're a member of my church, most likely I won't, I won't be the one uh, because my, my role, um, you know, might not permit me at this stage. Yes, at the early stages, I used to counsel myself. But if you remember the church, my role won't permit me to counsel yourself. But we have trained counselors in our church anyway. So they, so are, they work on the your counselors, Pascal, I mean, you train them. So is there only certification that you train them or the fact that they are also being passed, are all of them being pastored by you as well? Yes. Um, in, in our church, that's what it means. I'm the senior pastor. So if, if, if the counselor in our church, definitely. Um, they are being pastored by me. They are being trained by me. Also, and most of them, there are a few of them now are getting trainings also outside to add to what they have. But, um, but that's you know for church based. If it if it's a case that is beyond the normal things that they can handle, then they can escalate, you know. But most times, uh, most cases we have in church are not so out of control, you know. But yes, they all report back and feedback to me, so um, I still play a role in most of them. But that is for church. But um, counseling is not limited to that. In today in today's world, um, uh, most of people that even book to get counseling I even all over the world. They're not even necessarily in my Yeah, facility. that's okay. So I, I always feel like I can get your attention if you are looking at me. You can see my body language. You know how it hurts me. You, you, you can tell where it's pinching me. Can you really tell that virtually? Yes, um, it's not at the same level, but you can. Um, before COVID, all of us were very into physical, but COVID has taught us that um, you can still do a lot of things online. So. Um, it might not be quite at the same level, but you can train and develop yourself to the point where you, you can get the vibes. If you're observant and sensitive, you can get a, you know, a good vibe also online. You, know, you don't have a choice, so uh, we make do with it, and it has been um, productive. Haske, I generally feel like I understand a lot of things. I'm emotionally intelligent, even me, spiritual. But even people that are not born again, um, they just feel like they know what to do. And it's a sign of weakness. I'm speaking for myself yes, that yes. why do I need to get, why can't I figure it out? Okay, yes. So why should I go to it? I mean, how do, how do you go to a counsellor? <laughs> Don't you, aren't you weak? Shouldn't yes. you know? Yes, you know, yes. I mean, some of us, we get a sense, you know yes. what to do. So why do, why do you need a counsellor? It's true, it's true. Um, the reason why counselling is not yet as common as it should be is that people feel if I go for counselling, then something's wrong with me, something's yes. wrong with my marriage. You know, so it has that image, it gives that bad image. Many people have that bad vibe that, oh, you know, it means something's wrong with me. And that's not the case at all. Everybody goes to a doctor. Anybody in doing big business definitely needs a lawyer. Because there are certain, there are certain areas you are not as gifted or as knowledgeable, yeah. you know, as, as you should be or as you need to be. So, um, in fact, I would look at you as a wise person if you go for counseling than if you don't go. And many people, especially men, struggle with going for counseling, you just feel, oh, I can figure it out myself. And definitely you cannot figure it out yourself. The same way you can't figure out a lot of things. You can't, for instance, you take your car to the mechanic. You don't say, I'm going to figure it out myself, except you are a trained mechanic. Mm. If you are not, and most of us are not, you will humble yourself and take that car to the mechanic. So just because you are married doesn't mean you know so much about marriage. So from premarital counseling, you need to understand relationships. The, the statistics show that marriages are struggling. Yeah. The statistics show that the CC is about 52, it's going to 60% now of marriages that end in divorce. And I even tell people that even the 40 or so percent that is not divorced, most of them, what they have is still not the idea or ideal of marriage. What they still have is just still a sham, it's just still a joke. It's not really the real, the real idea. So they are, the percentage of people getting married that are really enjoying and maximizing marriage, I'm sure is very, maybe 10, 15 percent. And this is still, this is the bad. So the, we need to, as, especially as Africans, we need to work on that image you know just like medicine the earlier you report or you know meet a doctor over a case the quicker the better it is to solve it instead of allowing it to spread or get to the stage where you know you can't really reverse it mm. and that's how relationships are when those quarrels or frictions are brewing when those constant disagreements you know are brewing that's the best time 
to address it. It doesn't mean you are bad, it doesn't mean you are weak. As a matter of fact, you are even a strong person mm -hmm. by being honest and fair enough to say, hey, we need a, 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 a trained person, you know, to help look at this case. And the benefits of counseling is so much. Even the wisest man that ever lived says that in the multitude of counselors, there's safety. That's the wisest man that ever lived. He said, look, without counsel, purposes fail. That's the wisest man. He said, you need counsel. Because focus creates blindness. Mm. There are things you are looking, if you're looking for what you can't see behind you. But you see, a counselor is trained to see aspects of that marriage that even you, you know, cannot see. Focus creates blindness. Okay, so Pastor K, on social media, everybody's marriage is working. Yes. And yes. nobody wants to be heard that they went to see a counselor. counselor. I'm not even saying yes. Pastor K now, a trained, trained counselor, counselor yes. to resolve their issues. So what is the confidential nature oh. of, I'm talking about this, because you're doing it professionally now, you're charging. Yes. Yes. So how confidential, if I come to you, am I going to hear it as a sermon, yeah. you know, yeah. or, yeah, I mean, that's a genuine yes. Yes. concern. It's like, and because I need, my manager has to be perfect on social media. Yes, uh -huh. yes. Um, discretion is a major part of this job. Okay. Um, and like I said, again, a lot of people that are giving advice are not trained. They are well-meaning people mm. that are not just trained, uh, you know, to do this. So one of the first things you will learn as a trained counselor is discretion. You know, you can't share your client's stories. You can't, you know, div divulge their information. Um, I counsel all kinds of people, uh, people in government, uh, top wow. executives, celebrities, a lot of Niger celebrities and everything. So I'm used to high profile people. So in fact, when I have meetings with some of those people, I don't even meet with them in my office, mm. you know, so things like that. So you need to understand, you need somebody that's trained and understands the peculiarity of the situation to be able to address it. So um, discretion is key. And you must also have, you must also even present yourself in a way that people can feel safe mm. with their, because counseling is based on being open. Yes. We're not magicians. If you're not vulnerable. open, yes, yeah, vulnerable. If you're not going to be open with me, I, I'm not a magician. I can't figure everything out. You need to be able to tell me what's going on. So you must look for a counselor that you can trust, mm. you know, uh, and be willing to be open with, you know. And interestingly, you asked me a question, how do you even know a good counselor? Um, well, investigate the person, research who they are um, online. Nowadays, you can research anybody. So they are, check. Some of them have um, people that have done reviews or whatever. Check those things. In Nigeria? Oh, yes. Yes, there are counselors everywhere. There are counselors everywhere. Um, and like I said, even if you are watching and you have a flair for counseling, uh, we do trainings, you know, so we can help train you. Check their profiles. Check um, recommendations, reviews. Then, you know, you'll be able to see, is this person really number one? There, it takes two things to be a good counselor, in my opinion. Uh, number one, you need to be gifted. I would rather, because it's a flair, you know, it's like any other thing, like football, uh, medicine, and all that. You need some part of you that this comes to you a bit naturally. Okay. All right, that, that, that's an asset. Then the second part is the training. So you need to be trained. So this person, what qualifications do they have? What trainings do they have? You know, um, how exposed are they? Because um, it's just like medicine, it's not like a field of medicine. Most doctors, good doctors are learning every day. You know, different things are coming out, different information about the same sickness or different kind of sickness. So good doctors are learning every day. What are their certifications, what are their trainings? You know, um, how, what, 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 how many years of experience do they also have? Yeah, how long have they done this Yes, for? have they done this? Because yes. experience also counts, you know, uh, and all that. Aske, you train people. Have you ever, in your training, because you, you have to give a certification, because they paid certification as well. Have you ever not not certified somebody like from the way they ask questions you know these persons have a flair but if they carry a pastor k certificate people yeah. are going it sort of validates that they can do this so have you ever refused to certify someone yeah um yes but not officially yet but yes there are people have felt can't do this job um either because i see that they're not they don't have the patience or they don't have the skill mm you know, to spend, because counseling will take time. You must be patient, you must be willing to see this couple for hours and hours, sometimes back to back. So, yeah, people I see that this is not the right fit for you, you know, because counseling is stressful, it's work. You know, it's, that, that's why when people even talk about being paid or not paid, then, uh, you know, it shows that you think it's not work. So it, that, that's where the problem uh, comes. Okay, I don't work. think that they think it's not work. You know, there's a sense of entitlement <laughs> that comes with, professionally, I mean, we all watch movies. Yeah. So even if we don't see it a lot in Africa, we see it in the Western world. So we know that therapists are paid, counselors are paid significantly. But there's a sense of entitlement that comes with, he's my pastor. 
so he should be willing <laughs> to, do it for to free. spend That's time, true. you know. But but it's also understanding that time is money, and this is this is very very enlightening, you know. So I still want to go back to the people that have been trained, because I mean, how trained that sometimes I feel I've been in a session, maybe not a counseling session, but where I felt like the person was projecting what was possibly happening in their home yeah. on a relationship. Yeah. We were no, yeah. you know, just for me, very off. Yeah. So how do you, I, I, I know there's no crystal ball, but I'm sure that there's a way mm -hmm. that you go about it. I just would really like you to talk yes, about that. Yes, and one of the things we teach our counselors is that the, one of the first things about counseling is that you must be able to overcome yourself. You must be able to overcome yourself. That means you must separate your life, yourself, your thoughts, your ideas, your ideals from this case. Hmm. We tell counselors, look, if a couple comes to you, it's not for you to tell them what you think they should want. It's for you to find out what they want. Sometimes what they want might not be what you want. Mm, what you want for them. Yes, what you want for them. Mm. So you must be able to separate yourself from the couple and be like, you know, whatever you are going through, even if you think men has come. Okay. <laughs> you can't project that in that scenario. You must give both parties a fair hearing and all that. So your first job as a counselor is separate yourself from this. So, so what you're saying, it does happen, but it's, 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 it's not supposed to be. It shows that person is not maybe well trained or hasn't really perfected their craft. You can't project yourself. There are people that I counsel and when they tell me what they want to do, I help them. That's what I'm saying that I might not tell you to divorce, but if both of you want to divorce, as a counselor, my job is to just make sure that is amicable. Make sure you know, oh, wow. it's, yes, that's as a job. professional counselor. Oh, yes, yes, yes. You're but not again, trying to. Yes, okay, but again, as a pastor, exactly. I would still help. Mm -hmm. But like I said, I can't insist. Right. I can't insist. And there are even times that I'm the one that is even in support also that you guys need to take a breather. You know, you guys need to. It's okay, that's very bold. Oh, because, yes. Yeah, I, there, I there are cases where they, they abuse, you know, you, you can even see, there are cases where you see danger. And that's why I said sometimes pastors cause trouble because they just want to say, stay together. There are cases where you can see that. Violence has started. Hmm. Somebody's very frustrated. So it has started with slaps. Hmm. It started with pushing, shoving. You know that this thing will move, it will escalate more to real, you know, or to a worse level of abuse yeah. that will involve knives and guns. Yeah. So you can see it already. And you are seeing that this person causing this thing is not willing to change. So in those kind of cases, you have no choice but to tell the person, look, your life is in danger. You have to make a decision quickly. So you don't even tell them. You have to end it. You have no. to get them to say that. Yes, they, they need to see. You know, and that's what counseling does. Um, counseling helps you see. Hmm. Counseling helps you hack your mind. So in counseling, I'm not really telling you what. I'm helping you see the facts of some things. Helping you bring, I'm guiding you, you know, to a good decision for yourself. That's what I'm doing. So Ask, you've done this for a long time. Yes. So you're sounding very, <laughs> <laughs> you're sounding very. Yeah, yeah. And I, I don't know how long these people, because I mean, I, I don't think you can counsel everybody, but yes. you sound so, like, there's so much depth yes. to what you're saying, and it didn't come in one year. No, no, so, how long has this training that oh, you've been doing for you? Like, when do you release them into the world? <laughs> so, how long is the training for? Um, um, I, I have done this for like um, over 20 years now. I've, I've done this for over 20 years now. And um, this, wait, hold on, this fly is interested in showing this thing. Um, I've done this for like 20 years, now, over 20 years now, and I've done, I've done quite a number of certifications and trainings on this issue. Um, so it takes, it takes a long time to develop your craft. Um, nowadays, I, don't, I, I, do, I still counsel, but I try to minimize the amount of people I counsel. My passion more is to raise more and more counselors. The reason is because real counseling, sometimes just one session isn't really not enough. I need to work with you over a period. You know, this is something you've developed you know, over a period of time. It's not just going to go by one session, exactly. really. You know, it's in rare cases where one session is enough. Most times it's not. So, and I can't have the time. So that's why I'm moving my passion and my interest more towards training more people. The statistics show that we still have too many people to one, as in the ratio of clients to um, uh, counselor is still too high. You know, and that doesn't allow that time. Because really helping people takes time. You know, so uh, my dream is to raise more and more counselors. So, you know, our own courses run, runs for a couple of weeks. I was going to ask that. Yes, it runs for a couple of weeks, and it covers a wide variety. The first one we do for everybody is the basic counseling course. So, you need to understand how counseling even works. Basic course. I've done that one. Yes, yeah, good. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so in that one, we talk about the, the counselor. Because the counselor's health is important. We talk about the counselor. Then we talk about counseling. 
the art of self of counseling, then we talk about the client or the counselee. Mm. <laughs> the way we say, the client, so yes. Okay. So we talk about that. Who who are you talking to? So those things I think we deal with that. Then the next phases are talking about um, what what the concept of marriage is because you should have an a, a working. You know, when they say something is a car, um, we have we know how it usually has four tires. Usually has you know wheels, has steering. Has so we try to paint a picture of what what marriage is meant to be, so that if you're working with a couple, you know what you're where you're taking them to. Hmm. So after we do that, then there there's a wide variety. Like I said, that's why we teach our people you must specialize hmm. in either one or two areas. What are you the areas? So it's it's wide. There is infidelity recovery. Hmm. Most people think if there's cheating in the marriage, we can just tell each other sorry and move on. Mm. Now, this be, and this is like this is what the average person thinks. Yeah. Mm. Just forget. Yes, but it, it, it's broader than that. There, there are a lot of other small, small things. Um, you need to work on triggers. You need to work on relapsing. You need to work. On, both the offending party and the offended party needs to go through healing process. Then the marriage itself has to be healed. Hmm. You know, so it's a it's a long it's a long process, and it takes an expert to know how to move them. In fact, there are about twelve stages for wow. infidelity recovery. Twelve stages, and each stage. Sometimes can take weeks.